Thank you guys for tuning back into our channel. We have some new updates for you that we want to go through and explain all the ins and outs of the ethanol sensor. That's right, guys. We have an ethanol sensor wired to the ECU so it can adapt for E85 and 87 octane. You shouldn't be using that anyways, but it can adapt for it. So let's show you the features and how this all works. So we have the ethanol sensor provided by Integrated Engineering. This is their beautiful harness and you wire it into your EC right here. So we can actually see ethanol content through our logger tool. So this is showing live data so the car can adapt at any moment based off of what fuel you have in the car, so which is cool. It'll save your car. Guys, I highly recommend going with this upgrade to just make sure you don't get some bad batch of fuel. The car will know and adapt for it. So with that being said, guys, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go for a run with 93 octane in the tank right now, and then we're gonna go throw in E85 and do another quarter mile run so you guys can see the differences of the two spontaneous. It can happen like that. You put it in the tank, go for a run, no changing tunes. Literally, same tune, nothing adjusted. Let's go hit the road. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go for a run. To go over the modifications, we have upgraded fuel pump, uh, it's a Walboro 450. We have upgraded high pressure fuel pump. Along with, we have multi-port injection. We don't need multi-port injection, but I threw it on so I knew how to tune for it before I went to IS38 hybrid. Um, we are running my TCU tune, and we have the launch control set at 4,000, very aggressive. Um, we have boosted launch as well, which is phenomenal, but I'd really like to go over the stage two, stage two plus um, features. What did I change? So the biggest thing is we're in drive mode. It's really conservative and it's going to be nice and smooth. I don't have driver select mode, so I only can work with two modes, drive and sport, other than the multi-map switching feature. So to go over things I changed, just let's jump into manual mode. Now let's monitor the downshift speeds. This is in um, drive mode. So we'll go into sport mode so we can also show you cool little features there. But another feature I want to tell you about is sport mode is that I have doled sport mode back. It was way too aggressive. Um, here's my throttle angle. I'm holding it consistent and watch going through the RPM. The car's not taking off. See that? Back in the normal sport mode, it wanted to take off. I didn't like that. If you like that, I can adjust it. It's just to each their own. I thought the car was too aggressive. If I wanted the car to take off itself, then what am I doing with my pedal? You know, I'm gonna use my throttle pedal to give me more power. Now in sport mode, it's still gonna be responsive, unlike D mode, drive mode, where it's just slow, it's nice, and it's like economic mode. Now to go over sport mode, watch these downshifts here. So we're in sport mode, hit the downshift, hit the downshift. Look at that, guys. You guys in the A3 know that our downshifts were slow. So I, I transferred a lot of things from the Audi S3 TCU and then I refined the TCU from there. Going over the changes of the TCU in this tune, I have clutch pressure up to 15 bar, phenomenal. Um, I had to up the amperage to help with the clamping force. Newton meters, uh, the, what I mean by newton meters is the torque limiters are removed. There's none of those in this ECU. I can't say none, I raise them. Um, shifting speed. So shifting speed is better in drive. It's not gonna be the full fast as you can in drive mode, unless you're going a full 100% throttle. In sport mode, it's stupid quick. I mean, these shifts are beautiful. Other features of the tune, you guys already know, multi-map switching, I can change power levels. We really should get into the ethanol content sensor that we have installed and what, how does that work? So what it does is it knows a scaling. It's going from zero to one one being 100% E85, zero being not 87 octane. From there, I can scale maps, for instance, timing. Based off your ethanol content, lower timing. I can lower boost. Um, we can do boost by gear. Um, also, in different maps, I can tune for your feeling to have more timing, less timing. You know the whole ropes, how it goes. So other than that, guys, let's do a quarter mile run and see what it's like with a 93 octane tune with the wife in the car. Just had to do a quick trip to Mexico and let's do some launch. I got the drag here so we can show you before and afters. Six, 
six, boys. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry, I had to, someone pulled out in front of us. Hopefully I got it all the way, but either way. 1266 with the wife in the car, let's go. No weight reductions, fat 19 inch rims on this thing. That's cool, but let's go show you some E85 life because I love E85. You know, it's corn. It's corn. All right, guys, you can see the ethanol content 16%. Watch this. No changing the tune, E85. Oh, you fat tank, huh? It's cool because we're gonna show you guys how long it takes for E85 to mix with 93. I tell people, wait 15 minutes. I have seen it take 15 minutes of swishing around to actually get your proper mixture. All right, so we'll go drive around first and mix it up, and we'll see if that changes it. All right, guys, shake your car around. Let's go. Shake the booty, as they would say. Shake it up, shake it up. This shows you guys how long it takes for E85 to get to your injectors when you guys had 93 back in the tank. It takes a little bit to mix it up. So. Change it. All right, ethanol's changing, but guys, check this. So we're gonna do a quick little third gear. Uh, I wanna show you how fast these things shift. It is, oh, good. All right, here we go. Not bad, but guess what? That's pump gas. Watch how much power I'm about to gain here in a second. Ethanol content's up to E60 right now. So realistically, I should have close to full ignition timing. Get a little bit longer here. This is the sport, sport mode downshifts with your pedal feel. I'm not braking hard, so. Let's do, I know you got E6, I'm gonna look at timing here. I wanna see these. Timing is definitely jumped up. It went from, what, six to 10 degrees to, we're up in the 14s, 18s now. Um, pull a little bit of timing. So, but it, again, only two degrees, that's not bad. It can adapt for that. E64, getting closer. I just wanna have the full power when we go full throttle. I'll tell you, the A3 definitely needs some upgrades in suspension wise, guys. I'm on stock suspension and I can just feel it. I'm like a, a loose paper in the wind doing this, you know? I'm not really getting that sturdy to the ground feeling, planted feeling. Um, so we're definitely gonna be moving into the suspension side of it as soon as we finish up ECU, TCU calibration. Because uh, going faster, I mean, we got to get in the brake stuff too, but going faster, guys, you need better control and you're going to need better braking. So our E64, I'm probably going to run with that. E64 is not bad. We're not in the best environment, guys. It's, what, 76, 80 degrees out. We're a little bit humidity because we uh, had a little bit of rain, so we're about sitting at 1,600, 2,000 DA, which isn't horrible but then again, we're still missing power. From what I can tell you, because last night, whoo, she was saucy. All right, let's spin this baby around. Let's get a quarter mile. It's not gonna show you the true as fast as it should be, because you know, full 85, it's giving you all the timing. But with E60, it's gonna be close enough for you guys to see the true difference in it. All right, guys, here we go. More power up top. She is continuing. All right, guys, I had to pull out. Oh, gosh dang. Sorry, guys. We had a car in front of us again. All right, but still, 12 3 1 with the wife in the car. We got a little bit of weight, no weight reductions. Let's get the AC back on here, though. So, let's go over this. It already, it gets you. Every launch you do, you know, it's just, it's intense. You can, you can sense the adrenaline in my body, the blood, I'm making sure I keep us safe. So let's go review some quarter mile times here. 
we went from a 12.66 to a 12.31, um, finishing the 12.66, which was a 93, it was 107, 107.5. Let's show them the drag here. Oh, I don't want to name it. Show me it. Look at that power. Well, that's nice. She definitely got out of box. Not too bad. A little short shift, fine, because, you know, attraction. But uh, there it is, guys. Very sturdy run. I am impressed with the launch. It is definitely improving. Let's go show you the E85. So there is the E85 getting out of the box. I didn't build as much boost. I tried to get out of it quick. So, um, but still doing fairly well here. 12.31, very consistent power. I mean, look at the delivery of the whole power through the whole band. It is very consistent here. Let's go look at the zero to 60 times. So we did better last night, actually. We did a mess around of 3.89, that's colder weather. So it shows you guys, cold weather obviously makes power. So here's the E85, 4.06, 4.31, 4.06. Again, we have somebody in the car, so these will improve. So I'm gonna share you a story. You can skip right here, but you really should listen to this and why. Because it shows I care about your car. Also, guys, I'm tuning my car. Do you want me to blow it up? No. Do you want me to push it to the max? Yes. So we gotta find that safe boundary between maximum and safe maximum. Last night, I was doing a quarter mile pull for you guys. We're gonna get a video, right? Well. My, I was low on fuel, just under a quarter, you know, I was trying to get good times. Well, guys, I'm going through my pole, third gear comes around, boom, I lose all power. I'm like, what, what the heck just happened? I've launched this car multiple times, I've never had this happen. I was like, what just happened? Well, so I go ahead and I do it again. Boom, puts me in limp, my throttle's gone. I'm like, is my car, did I mess my tune up? Do I gotta start all over again? Hopefully not the case. Well, I go and log the car. I'm logging the car. Here's my fuel pressure up here at 6,000. It drops down to 2,000, guys. That is a huge dip as far as fuel pressure. For example, that's 2,000 kPa, uh, if I'm right, um, scalation. I would say probably 20 to 30 PSI. So I'm requesting 60 PSI of pressure. I'm around 20 PSI in the fuel pressure. That means my fuel pump is having a hard time keeping up. And it wasn't because the fuel pump can't handle it. You guys know the Wallboro 450 can handle an IS20 turbo. Well, I'm low on fuel. There you go, guys. If my car, if my tune didn't take away the power, I could have harmed my car. I could have misfired. I could have took a cylinder out. Because what they tell you, if it's lean, it's mean. When you run lean, you run very high uh, temperatures in the cylinder. Cylinder pressure is very high as well. Temperature goes up, pressure goes up. So to get along with the story, I care about your guys' engine. I put your cars into limp mode if there is an issue. So I, I know you guys don't wanna be in limp mode. I get it, you wanna have power, but if you have issues with your car, I want you to call me, yo, I got an issue with my car, and you're mad, fine, but I'm gonna be like, your car didn't blow up. That's what I'm talking about. We can fix your car, find out the mechanical issue, and get you back on the road safely. If it's misfiring, you're gonna feel it, and you're gonna be like, oh, I gotta pull out. I don't want you to get to that point where it's misfiring. You guys know on the MQB platform, as soon as this car misfires, EPC like that. That's what I like. I want you to be in limp mode to save your car. So I don't want to blabber on, but it's a long story I've shown you. I, last night, ran into this, and I'm thankful because I was like, man, I really want to take my quarter mile. I'm ticked off. There were great temperatures, great conditions. But you know what? So be so. I couldn't do it. I was low on fuel, so and there's no E85 around me, I couldn't fill up, so. Well guys, as you can tell, the E85 versus 93 octane, what a difference. Dropping 0.3 of a second, that is impressive. I mean, watch this guys, watch these shifts. I mean, gosh dang, that is just, feeling good <laughs> you just get rowdy with it hit this car while you're at it guys I love it and you know it's crazy is that while we're taking this video I could say I finished my e85 stage 2 tune today yes that's right finalized 
I love the drivability. I don't think it's too aggressive. My cold starts are bomb, even in Michigan cold weather, guys. I have a tune up there on E85. Cold starts are mint. It says it starts just like normal. That is a hard thing to do on E85. On top of that, the map switching is working. On top of that, the multi-port injection is working. On top of that, the ethanol sensor is working, guys. I have all these things. I have, guys, I, <laughs> I have like, without meth injection on, I have two ways of injecting fuel, but I have meth injection. And then it's just funny thinking about it. I have three injectors squirting fuel into this dang car. Like, can it get enough fuel? It needs fuel, it eats it up. I'm done blabbering on, guys. I hope you can enjoy this video and really understand what is the ethanol sensor, what does it do, why should you install it? And I highly, 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 highly recommend getting an ethanol sensor. You don't know when you're gonna get a bad mix of E85 or you don't know when you're gonna get winter blend E85. That's E60, realistically. So you should pull back a little degree of timing. As you guys saw, with E60, we pulled a little timing. So we're not getting all the power. So other than that, guys, let's park this beast. So guys, there it is. You have the data. We dropped a, what, pretty much 0.3 of a second on E85. That is good. Those are good gains. It's not fully 85, so we don't got all the gains. But guys, we have the wife in the car. We're not dropping any weight. To get a like that instant power just by putting in some gas, no tune change, I am happy. This is a tune now that I can offer to everybody in the market, and I hope you guys can enjoy this as much as I did tuning this thing. It's just, it's crazy I can make the car do what I want. <laughs> like, I literally can make it snappy. I can make it slow. I can do all these things. There's there's too much I can do. You know, I go crazy with all the options. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this can help you on your decision to get the e-ethanol sensor. Highly recommend. So like always, guys, stay BDT tuned.